Hello and welcome to Using Options as a Stock Investor. We welcome you out here on this Tuesday morning. Uh, just a quick shout out to everyone. We've got Dom, Robert, Wiley, Mark, Silas, Rong, Chris, and many others. Good morning to you. Let's go ahead and uh, hop right in. Now, the first thing we want to do just real quick is we also want to go through today what are some other what are some of the strategies that we're going to cover in this class? Now I'm going to tell you right up front so you could be aware of that. Just like we've done, we, we're going to cover verticals in this class. We're going to cover cash secured puts. We want to be very familiar with covered calls. We will also include in this class long synthetics and stock positions. So those are the strategies we're going to really focus on. So as you come to this class each time, I would like you to kind of become like a master of those strategies. I think they're very applicable to anyone who's a stock investor. Uh, now, what, uh, and that could be buying stock or maybe buying something that is based on stocks, okay? Now, you might decide that maybe trading options is not for you, but I at least want you to be aware of the strategies uh, where you could consider that for yourself. Now, as we hop right in, uh, we will get into the schedule for just a moment. Remember that options carry a high level risk, not suitable for all investors. Also understand when we talk about examples, we will talk about them in terms of using technical analysis, but there's other approaches, which Eva has already told us about, including fundamental analysis that may assert some different views, okay? And also remember that investing involves risk, including loss of principal. And also remember as we talk about examples, remember that uh, we're gonna be using the paper money account on the Thinkorswim platform, the software-based version. Now, just real quick, we'll talk about market conditions. Uh, number one is when we talk about market conditions, I want to kind of talk about my routine that I do each morning. But I kind of want to, as we talk about assessing market conditions, I want to talk about why I look at what I look at. What am I trying to glean from it? Okay. Is it just randomly looking at charts? Not necessarily. Okay. So I'll talk about that. Now, number two, we're going to talk about the strategies we, we're going to really focus on over the next year. And then really with that, we're going to illustrate those strategies. Now, as we do that, you know that last Monday, we did set up the new portfolios. And uh, we want to kind of talk about where we are, what are some positions that we might consider adding to. Now, let's go ahead right here. And uh, I think this will be a good time to kind of slide this over. Some of you might be wondering, well, James, when do you specifically teach? Well, I, I'm going to be teaching the Tuesday, okay, this class, ongoing. I'm going to be teaching the Wednesday class. And by the way, if you do not have this, let me send this out to you. I want to tell you right up front. That way you can carve it out of your schedule. So Tuesdays, here we are, same time, same station. And they're live and recorded. Number two, you're going to go to Wednesday. And I teach a class on Wednesdays. And it's really called Protective Strategies. That class covers protective puts, covers collars, covers futures. Hello. Okay. That's tomorrow. And then also on Thursday, and by the way, I'll be doing that one ongoing until Ben uh, comes back, and then also getting into my typical class, which is called Trading the Trend, okay? So those are really the classes that I'm doing right now. John McNichol, uh, I was covering for his technical indicators class. He will come back next week, but I'll be planning on really Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Mondays and Fridays, I typically talk to myself and I talk to my Twitter family. That's what I like. That's what I'm going to be doing. Okay. So by the way, that's a great kind of a, a, uh, an entry there. If you're not on what's formerly known as Twitter, now X, okay, uh, join us there. Now, just real quick as we get started, I also want to give us a quick reminder that we said that these are recorded. Now, remember, when you go to this page, this is the page that uh, is the trader talks from Schwab coaching. Make sure you bookmark this, okay? Now, uh, if you do that, what you're gonna notice is it's gonna have home, videos, live playlists. Let's click on playlist for just a moment. If we click on playlist, what it is is each one of these little squares is the class, okay? And what you're gonna notice is trading the trend. There's the class for that. Here's the class for trading with technical indicators. Here's the class for using options as a stock investor. Ah, right there. So let's go ahead and click on that and I'll send that link out to you as well. And so what this does is it shows you the past classes that we've done, okay? Now, you're gonna now see on the right-hand side, the reason why they call this a playlist is because it's a playlist. I've been waiting all morning to say that. Okay, now I feel better. So the past classes that we did was cash secured puts. 
using uh, what's your investing focus, uh, why long call verticals are important, et cetera. So now, just like TiVo, you have it right at your fingertips. Now, by the way, if, if you've got a phone, you got an iPad, whatever, you can pull these up right on your mobile device. You do not have to be sitting at a desk at a computer and be watching this. Feel free to go mobile, okay? Now, let's go ahead and hop right in, but hopefully that was helpful to you. Now, let's kind of talk about this. Now, Eva says, really? There is no fun without fundamentals. I know how you feel. I know how you feel, okay? I'm dealing with it too. But also just remember that Brent teaches the class and also Mike Fairborn as well. But you know that uh, kind of, some people are more technicians, some people more option people. I I, I got to admit, I, I know more about fundamentals than anything, okay? And so when we talk about trades and investments, it's going to really be using all of the disciplines, okay? So there you go. Now, let's kind of talk about this and hop right into some charts. So first off, one thing I kind of mentioned to you is I want to kind of write down uh, the routine what is it that we're trying to get? Now, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on this, but I want to kind of talk about some of the things we look at, and, and I want to talk about the order in which we look at them and then what we're trying to get from it. A lot of people say, I like to invest, but I don't know what to do. And then if I knew what to do, I don't really know what to do with it. So let's kind of just talk about the first thing we look at is the indexes, and I like to look at them in this order. So when we look at the SPX, okay, we use the SPX really for the broad market okay and really the broad market trend okay now it's and i it's really a gauge of bullishness or bearishness for equities okay now the really important thing about the spx was when you also look at the spx you have to understand that tech is 29 percent of the s p so if you looked at let's say the sp s p 500 and you saw it was going up, 29% of the S&P 500 is technology. You also have 11% in discretionary, okay? And you also have, in this case, financials are 13%. So what's my point in saying this? Guys and gals, 53% is in three sectors. 53%, you have 10 sectors, three of them are over half. So when you look at the S&P 500, you have to know they're not all equally weighted sectors. If the S&P is going up, you're probably going to be looking at uh, tech, discretionaries, and financials. Now, so that's what I, we really look at, the why we look at the SPX. One second thing we actually look at is the Dow. And we're really trying to see the large cap companies. And I kind of think of the large cap company as, as these are more quality companies. These are ones that have really broader exposure. These are the ones that are also, I'm going to also kind of really say maybe more monopolies. They're also ones that are cash cows, nothing against cows, okay? They're also potentially dividends, stocks, et cetera. So that's why we look at those, okay? Now, we'll come to the U.S. dollar in just a moment, but when you take a look at the Dow, what am I trying to get out of it? When I look at something like the Dow, I'm trying to really see is there maybe investors that are trying to find things that are maybe potentially lower volatility, okay? And they're maybe looking a little bit for more value. Now, I'm not saying there's not growth in there, okay? But I'm saying they're, they're kind of more proven, okay? Business models, okay? Now, NASDAQ, I know, I know you were saying, just go to the NASDAQ, okay? When we talk about the NASDAQ, we're talking about 50% tech. Clearly, if we look at, let's say, NASDAQ, Clearly, we're looking for growth-like companies. And the reason why we look at the NASDAQ is we're looking to see, is there risk-taking behavior? Well, how would you know if there's risk-taking behavior? Well, if the trend was going to the upside, people are willing to take that risk. They're trying to buy that exposure to growth, okay? Now, by the way, uh, Orlando calls it factor-based investing, momentum, right? Now, when you take a look at, let's say, the Russell, high exposure, okay? high exposure to financials. You can, if you overlay the financials and the Russ on top of each other, they almost move together. If you look at this, we would also say this has a high degree, okay? I like the caps better. Uh, high degree of risk-taking behavior. If you get the Russell to go up, okay, uh, you're probably in a better state in terms of the economy. 
The smaller caps are going to tend to struggle more if the economy is struggling. Okay. Now let's kind of go back. Let's kind of take a look at these some just real quick. So in this order, SPX, what do you see on the SPX? And I want you to kind of tell me yesterday we talked about bullish and bearish divergences. Okay. So we talked about bullish and bearish divergences. And um, one thing is, if you take a look, what do you notice on this chart? What do you see? Now, here's what I like. I didn't ask you what you thought. Okay. What do you see? And if I, if I couldn't really, if all I knew was where's the price in relationship to the moving averages, I would have to admit that when you look at the price, it is dipped down below both moving averages. Now, what's the severity of that? Well, we know if the price goes down below the short-term moving average, okay, you have negative momentum. If we're down below, let's say, the 20-period moving average, we actually have in the shorter term negative trend in the short term. It's maybe flattening off and or pulling back. Now, Robin R says bearish divergence. So we talked about that quite a bit yesterday, okay? Lisa says bull flag. She sure hopes so. Okay, okay, Lido Len, or Len says 10 flat. Yeah, and we said this yesterday. Every time we get a bearish divergence, it doesn't mean bearish, but it could be consolidation, okay? Now, when we look at the Dow, you're going to see similar, but what you're going to notice is the Dow's putting up a little bit of a fight here, okay? Did not pull back as much as the S&P. We went down for a day and then pushing back up. Now, based on what we just said, okay, well, if we look at the the Dow, these are large cap companies, quality companies, broader exposure, monopolies, cash cows, dividend stocks, blah, 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 et cetera. Well, they might be looking for more value-proven business models. Okay, so the, what kind of stands out to us so far is Dow's a little stronger, NASDAQ. If you look at the NASDAQ, what you're going to notice is it looks like more of the S&P. We talked about that percentage of tech, and it looks like it's gotten flatter a little bit, diverging. We talked about that. And what you're going to notice is if you look at, the, let's say, the Russell, you're going to see if we said, well, where's the Russell? Looks like the other S&P, the NASDAQ, and RUT, S&P, and NASDAQ look very similar. The only one that looks different is the Dow. Again, not very surprising because when things consolidate or pull back, some investors might want to go more to value something that also might pay a dividend. Okay. Now, let's kind of also talk about the VIX just real quick. When we talk about the VIX, this is uh, this is really kind of showing investors' fear, okay? And I like to call it like blood pressure gauge. If the VIX is low, well, what we have in this case would be that investors are not very fearful. If they were fearful, they'd probably be going out there and buying puts and doing things of like protection. If the VIX if, if the VIX level was high. Investors, at that point in time, they're more fearful. When we look at the VIX currently, and we do this daily, and this is a part of the routine, is when you look at this, we talk about that bullish divergence. And this is now going to bleed into what we talk about when we talk about strategies, okay? So when you look at the VIX, you know, if we kind of had to forecast, and by the way, when you invest, you're forecasting, okay? You don't invest without thinking past probably one minute from now, okay? You're thinking, what could it do? You don't know what it's going to do, but you're thinking, what could it do? Okay. So if we said, what do we think could happen with the VIX? Potentially, okay, it wouldn't be a surprise if volatility went back up. If volatility goes back up somewhat, where do the trends typically go? Okay. Now, one of the reasons why we also look at the VIX is this would also probably tell us the trend of the markets. And I'm going to say, when I say markets, we're using the SPX. If the VIX is low, it's telling us we're probably in a certain trend condition. Now, I'm just going to speak to just real quick a couple things. When we look at the dollar, you pull up whatever symbol your heart desires. When we look at the dollar, is it bullish? Okay. Is it bearish? If we have a dollar that's been bearish and it has been, you might look at other currencies that might be stronger. The, uh, and we mentioned those, euro, uh, pound, Swiss franc, things like that. If we also have the dollar bearish, that, that might help the multinationals that are selling their products abroad. Okay, that could help them. 
The other thing is if the dollar was, let's say, bearish, it might help commodities in general. Some of those commodities could be crude oil, okay? It could also be gold, and it could also be uh, silver, and it could also be copper. Now, when you look at, the, say, the dollar, crude oil, gold, silver, copper, you might be trying to play, let's say, the, the price itself, or you might be trying to play stocks that have a correlation to those. So you're looking at the price of these to give you an idea of where you could go look, okay? And the last one, or second to last one, is when we look at, let's say, whoop, the TNX. We look at the TNX, the 10-year the rate, and the reason why we're looking at the 10-year rate is it affects, okay, financials. It also affects, okay, uh, borrowing for companies, okay? And by the way, it's also how they actually, uh, are they going to use maybe debt or are they going to use equity, okay? Their capital structure. The last one but not least is sectors. When we talk about sectors, we are trying to focus probably on three minimum to five, okay? Now I'm going to kind of show you something in just a second. So now I am not pulling up anything with dollar, crude, gold, silver. You take those symbols however you want. I cannot show you those, okay? So uh, when you, if someone said, how's oil doing or how's gold doing, what symbol would you use to track those? Now, let's kind of talk about sectors for just a sec before we get into the portfolio and strategy. So if I were to say, hey, what's, what sectors are kind of going up a little bit, one of them that we're seeing a little lift to is utilities. Now, this is not unusual. When the VIX is low, investors tend to be a little bit more focused on income and perhaps value, less so on growth. This is not unusual. We track this all the time. We also see that when you look at staples, it's not unusual. We're actually seeing that staples kind of looks like it has an ascending triangle. And again, these areas tend to outperform. Outperform does not mean that they have positive returns, but they just not might they might not be as negative as let's say technology. Uh, not that. Uh, no, let's see, IXT. When you look at let's say technology, what we're noticing is like we saw in the index. We're kind of seeing a pullback. We're also seeing on the technology of the sector itself, the 20 period moving average, that going red as well, okay? I also want you to kind of notice is when you look at IX, uh, IXY, you're going to see that that is also kind of flattening off. So we're seeing kind of growth cooling a little bit with a huge move that it's made lately. And we're seeing a little bit more of a push to utilities and staples. What about healthcare? Oh, not, not so much, okay? Now, so I wanted to kind of go over what we look at and why we look at it. Is that helpful? Because I don't want you to watch this and say, well, uh, why is he looking at what he's looking at? I'm trying to gleam something out of this, okay? Now, are there any questions? Any questions? Now, as I'm maybe getting some questions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bring up something, but I'm also going to kind of, I'm going to look and see if there's any questions. But let's kind of talk about now, let's getting into the portfolio and strategy. So remember what I said in this class, we're going to focus on a couple key strategies. Now, what would absolutely break my heart? I mean that, is if you said I went to a bunch of classes, but I'm not really comfortable on any of them. I mean, that just break my heart. OK, that would just mean like I did my job horribly. OK, so what we want to do is we want to kind of focus on a couple of strategies where we feel comfortable what they are and when to consider using them. So first off, I like to call this really a delta scale. OK, so the first thing we want to kind of know is if we, for example, buy shares of stock, it takes the most capital and it's very sensitive to direction. So if I come over here and say, I'm going to buy 100 shares of stock, okay, let's label this as stock, you know, we need, a, we need a lot of capital, and we better be right on direction, okay? If I were to go to the far left, and, and by the way, over here on the right-hand side with stock, no TD, okay? TD stands for no time DK. Now, forgive me, but that's how I spell it. No time decay, okay? Now, on the left-hand side, 
if we said, well, let's say the delta is zero. Now, remember, if we if we chose a strategy that had a delta of, of zero, that means in the shorter term, the strategy is insensitive to price movement. That would be more synonymous for an iron or an iron condor, okay? And this is really focusing on time decay. I'll label it as TD. So if you pick a strategy on the left-hand side, you're not trying to focus on direction. You're trying to focus on time. And the differences in ops and strategies is what you're trying to be exposed to. Are you trying to get the direction right? D. Are you trying to get money from time decay? Or are you trying to get maybe money from volatility going up or down? That is the difference in the strategies. Now, if we take a look at what we talked about, let's say last week, we talked about verticals. I'm going to label this as LCV, long call vertical, which we said was more profitable potentially. But the biggest thing is it's a uh, it's lower probability. When we talk about something that in that, that long call vertical is really more of a debit spread, you pay for it, where an SPV is more of a short put vertical, and that is a credit, and that's more probability based. Most strategies, when we talk about a vertical, these two, these typically probably have a delta of 10 per contract. They're not as sensitive, okay? We can take more fluctuation. Now, let me ask you a question. How would you know when to consider a long call vertical or short put vertical versus a stock? Well, if, if it goes back to trend, right? If we're seeing a stronger trend, you might say, can I buy shares of stock to get more exposure to that trend? That's why people use stocks, okay? Now, the other part of this is, which we talked about three weeks ago, is a short put, which is the potential obligation to buy the shares at the strike price, okay? Now, what we're gonna see in this case is we talked about that being a delta in our examples of a delta of 30 to 40. Now, that is not stationary. That delta can change based on time and where the stock price goes. And what you're gonna notice is here, which we're gonna talk about today is CC would be a covered call, okay? That typically has a delta between about 50 to 60. The biggest thing is there with the CC, the cover call, is we need 100 shares of stock, okay, 100 shares of stock. And then what we're trying to do is we're trying to sell a call. And that selling the call is we're trying to collect time DK. Now, everyone say that with me, time DK. Okay, good. We're trying to get that time DK. We're trying to get that trend in our favor. But if it doesn't go up maybe as much as we thought, is there an alternative way to make money? Now, whenever we sell something, these two are what we call negative vega. If volatility goes up, those options can become more expensive to buy back. Boo! And what it does is it lowers that likelihood that we could capture that time decay in the short term. Now, the other, the last one, which we'll mention in this class is a long synthetic. A long synthetic is an option sandwich. What do you mean by that? Well, it's a long call, okay, long call, and it's a short put. And those two, are, if you kind of think about that, a long call and a short put, those are two bullish option strategies. And when you use them in combination with each other, you're trying to be as directional to stock with potentially less capital, but you're trying to numb the time decay, and you're also trying to numb the volatility because you're long and short, okay? So if you did a long synthetic, you are really directional. That's what you're trying to focus on, okay? Now, in this class, so uh, last week, we talked about long call verticals check. Three weeks ago, we talked about a short put when we might want to use that. And what you're going to see is in this class today, I like to kind of focus on a couple of examples of covered calls in the next 20 to 23 minutes or so. Now, in this class, what we're also going to focus on, not today, but 
we will absolutely talk about long synthetics as well. We could talk about them today and tomorrow. So the goal here, if you said, I'm going to come to this class every week, I'm going to watch a live or recording. What classes am I going to become a black belt in to practice on? It's going to be these strategies. Okay. Now, why is why are we talking about a cover call? Is it because you want to talk about them? No, it's, I don't want to talk about it per se. Like, uh, it, it's it really goes back to it's more about the timing. It's not what I want. Usually, when we use cover calls, it's when the market SPX is really in what we call trend number four. Prices are above both moving averages. The stock or the market is up near resistance. The volatility is low, like right now. So we're using the market as a way to kind of tell us which strategy we might consider. Now, as we go into this example of a cover call, I want to kind of just make reference of two different types of cover calls, and let's look, then let's look at examples. When we talk about cover calls, we need shares of stock where there's a trend, where uh, there's an uptrend, we're above support, and there's two different types of cover calls. I'm going to call, we're going to label one as really a BW. You might be thinking, well, that, well, duh, that's Ben Watson. It could be. But for us, it's really going to be a buy right. We're going to go long stock. Long means that we're buying the shares of the stock. And number two is we're going to sell the call. Now, this one I think is a little easier that we're going to sell the call. When we do, and it's going to be together, that we don't have to have as good as timing. Okay. So this one right here is we're going to do focus on mostly today, and I'll talk about why when I show you the portfolio. And the last one is really what we call leg in, okay? So leg in means that you bought the stock already. So you have the stock already. I'm just going to label it as AL, okay? You already have it. And then you start to see the trend of the stock pulling back, which many of them are. Your later selling call, okay? When that trend bumps its head up against resistance, the moving averages maybe turn red, the price drops down below the short-term moving average, like we're seeing right now, okay? So we're going to focus more on this. Now, why? Well, remember, last Monday, what we did is we reset the portfolios. Let's get a taste of what's really in these portfolios. So number one is we have NVIDIA, we have Tesla, that's in the margin portfolio. When we go to, let's say the, uh, now by the way, that started with 45,000. When we go to the IRA, which I need to fix the trades from yesterday, we have AMD, we have Amazon, we have NVIDIA, we have Tesla. Now that account started with 185,000. So if you asked me and said, hey James, why are you focusing more on buy rights? Uh, it's a simple answer. We don't have that many stocks. So there's not a lot of examples to do leg in, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna kind of pull up some examples of stocks that could be in an upward trend, and we're gonna look to evaluate, could we look to do a, an example of a covered call? Now, by the way, we'll talk about trend, technical analysis, of course. We're also gonna talk about volatility, how it affects the premiums, and really the max gain, max losses. Okay, now if we take a look at this, the first example that we're going to look at is Nike. Nike is one of the few stocks that is still showing both moving averages green. Now, what I learned in my investing is, James, if you just keep yourself out of it, it would probably go better. How many of you realize that now? If I just don't get involved, Okay. How many of you ever realized that? If I stopped overthinking it, okay? So the thing is, we almost have to become numb to our emotions, okay? Well, you don't have to. You can be emotional, but it's just up to you. But for our example, we're going to be numb to emotion. If we looked at this, we'd say, well, both moving averages are green, prices above both. It has momentum and current trend. Now, we're going to use this as an example to buy shares of stock. Now, when we talk about doing anything like selling options, we tend to try to sell options maybe 20 to 50 days to expiration. That way, there's not a ton of time, so that obligation goes on longer. But the other reason why we focus on 20 to 50 days to expiration is we're trying to have time decay on our side. 
Okay. Now we have the December expiration with 17 days. So if we're using 20 to 50 days to expiration, we're not going to use the 15 December. Now, by the way, that should be alarming because that means if you have not started Christmas shopping, well, you might want to work on that watch list. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the January. Now, in our examples, we tend to focus really on monthly options first. Why is that? Well, they tend to have more liquidity, okay? When we say liquidity, we're saying higher option volume, higher open interest, tighter bid ask spreads. Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean that we can't look at the weekly options after we look at the monthly options, but our first thing we're going to go look at is monthly options. So we, we looked at 20 to 50 days to expiration. The closest thing we can get on monthly options is the 19th of January. The first thing that we're going to go look at on the option table on the call side is we're going to go look at the strike that has a delta of 30 to 40. If I did this, it's going to be the 115 strike, and it's going to give us the 244 premium. Now, if I said in the margin account, can we buy 100 shares of stock uh, of Nike in an account that has 45,000? The answer is no. This is why we need different strategies. Because in different size accounts, we might say, well, you know what? Nike will do a covered call in the IRA account, but maybe in the, let's say, in the margin account, we might use more of a long call vertical or a short put vertical or a short put because, well, we can't buy those 100 shares and be below the threshold of capital that we're using per a position. This is why we also need to understand different strategies. Now, when we do this, what we're going to do is we're just going to come down here to the bid or ask. We're going to right click. We're going to go to where it says buy. And we're going to go right here to where it says covered stock. Now, when I click on that, okay, it's now going to come up with it. We're buying 100 shares of stock and then we're selling the call. Now, I, I ask you to forgive me, okay? But I, I'm kind of like an Excel person. I know you probably don't know that, but I'm just going to tell you it. So I like to kind of use Excel for a sheet of paper. 109.42, that's the stock entry. If we sell, we agree to sell those shares at 115, what's the stock price appreciation? Well, it'd be from 109.42 up to 115. So that math would really just be the difference between those two, which would be 558. This is the stock appreciation okay now with this stock appreciation i like to know how much upside do we have now the other part of this is we would not agree to sell those shares at 115 from now into expiration unless they gave us a little premium okay well the premium in this case is how much well that premium here is 246 if we use the bid if we try to get a little bit more Maybe we get 248. So let's kind of write this down. 248. Okay. Now, if if our shares were sold at 115, we get the stock price appreciation, but we also get the option premium. Okay. Now, 248. Now let's add those two together and see what do we get. If that if those shares were called away, called away just means someone took our shares, we would really get 806. Now, the total investment is 109.42. Now, what's kind of amazing is when you kind of look at that in a 52-day period, if that were going to happen, that's 7.3%. Now, some investors would say, geez, I would like to get poked in the eye every 52 days for 7.3% potentially, okay? Many investors know how you feel. Now, if that stock were to go sideways, that in 52 days, it's exactly right where it is, okay, the only thing that we would really get is 248. Well, if I said, well, okay, so the stock didn't go up, that's partially bad because it would have been nice, but the only thing we really grab is the premium. And if the only thing we really grab is the premium, if it's still at 109.42, then that percent would really be 2.27%. Now, the one thing is that that's not maybe including is was there a dividend, okay? Did they actually pay a dividend over the next 52 days? They might. That is not included. We could still get the dividend provided that someone didn't take our shares. Now, 
The way that the cover call is negative is clearly if the stock goes down. What's nice about this is if we buy the shares at 109.42 and we collect 248, there is a lower break even. Okay. And that lower break even is as long as the stock, the stock would need to be, stock would need to be at 106.94 to be broken even. Okay. Now that does not include the 65 cent commission. But my gosh, we're going to be very, very close. Okay. So the biggest thing is if you lower the break even, do you have a greater chance to be profitable? The answer is yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do in this case is we can also still set a stop. How do we do that? Single order. First triggers SEQ. Now, if we do this, we're just now going to go to the green line. We're going to right click on that green line. Right click. We're now going to say create opposite order. Okay, now let me show you that one time again. The way this looked initially was this first order is SDQ. Okay, let me actually do this again. We're going to right click, buy. Okay, we're going to go down to where it says covered stock. We already had that. Now, first trigger is SDQ, it's already there. So just make sure it's there. We're going to right click on that green line, create opposite order. Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because we are concerned if that stock were going to go down to 95, go down to 90, go down to 85, go down to 80. We have unlimited risk down to zero, okay? So the cover call is not protection. It's an income strategy, okay? Now, if we took a look at this, we're gonna go, we're gonna change this limit to a market, day to a GTC. This is called a conditional order. We're gonna specify where we would wanna consider exiting if the stock were gonna reverse trend. A AP 514. Now, by the way, there is a dividend upcoming, 37 cents per 100 shares. So it'd be $37. Not unbelievable, but it's a couple of pennies. Okay. If we were going to set a stop, Robin R, where would you put the stop? AP 514, where would you put it? Eddie, where would you put it? DJ B, where would you put it? Richard, James L, where would you put the stop? Where do you see the support level? I think if we kind of put our heads together here, now, by the way, we're not doing any trades. If they're not good trends, we're not going to do them. Because what happens is we track the portfolios, the trades we put in, we're thinking that they could all go up, okay? We don't want to put anything in the portfolio that we don't think is really there in terms of a trend. We don't know what's going to happen, but we've got to think that it's a legit candidate. It's an example, but the thing is we're tracking that portfolio over time, Okay. Now, if we take a look at this, if I said, well, geez, I'm going to set that stop below 104.14, okay, 104.19, excuse me, set a stop less 2%, and drill says 104, AP 514 says 2% below 104, we're on the same page. What's the number? 102.10, okay? Now, if you said to us, James, what do we want this position to do? What would you tell someone if they asked that question? 102.10. Okay, 102, 10. We want to make sure that the number that we type in here shows up down here. Do not assume, visually put your eyes on it. When I typed in that number, I typed in the number, press enter, make sure it shows up right there. It's now saying if that stock goes to that price or lower, buy the callback and then sell the shares. So this trade does not have unlimited upside. It's capped. Okay, it's capped at 115 plus the premium. And that's what a lot of people don't quite understand. We're making up to the 115 plus, okay, 248. So when we kind of think about theoretically what is that cap, it's really 115 plus the premium. So it's like the investor made up to 117.48, 117.48. Which, by the way, in 52 days, that's not a bad move. Now, there are some people out there that always say, man, I like bigger returns. But we're not trying to make everything in our portfolio super bullish. We want to have some things that are like stock trades, long synthetics that are more directional plays. But sometimes we might not get the trends that we really thought. We want to spread out the ways we could try to benefit from the market, direction, time, volatility. Guys and guys, this is what professionals do, okay? 
Uh, it's not a, just about playing direction, okay? Now, what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna go confirm and send. Let's read the two orders out loud due to potentially wide markets or liquidity risk at the time of activation, okay? This order may be mainly substituted with a limit order upon activation and worked until filled. With stop orders, there's no guarantee the execution price will be equal to or near the activation price. The commission there is 65 cents. Now, I've had an issue with my this account lately, and that took it. So we're good. So now what you're going to notice is, now, Cola, Raj, okay, AC, just like we did last year, we're going to now start tracking these positions together. So when you come to this class, you're not going to have to wonder and say, geez, I wonder what he's going to talk about. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to talk about. And what we're going to talk about is really the strategies uh, that we mentioned before, which is kind of go back up there. We're going to focus on really verticals. We're going to focus on uh, short puts. We're going to focus on cover calls, long synthetics, and stock. And really, we're going to become a master of those, okay? Now, I think what that's going to do is it's going to help build your confidence, okay, that now you can kind of pick the strategies you want. Now, remember, why did we choose that? The reason why we chose this, okay, is because given the market conditions, volatility low, a cover call might be best suited, perhaps, in this example, when the volatility is low. When we think some trends might consolidate, that's why we're talking about the strategy right here, right now. Now, I'm going to say, now, if someone said to me, well, James, this must be nice. I mean, if you're rich, okay, I don't have $10,000 to go buy 100 shares of stock. Well, let's use an example that's $66. Now, I am not gonna tell you that Zoom has been the most unbelievable trend you've ever seen in terms of the upward trend. I'm gonna submit that it's a little bit more sideways. Would you agree? Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm also kind of showing you how volatility affects the premium that we get, okay? Now, I'm going to first show you, if we looked at a stock like AEP, the implied volatility is 19. And if you have a lower implied volatility, now, what does that mean to me, lower implied volatility? If someone said lower implied volatility, in my mind, I'm thinking the implied volatility is between 15 and 24. The problem with low implied volatility is you have to sell or could sell closer to the current stock price to get any premium. So if the implied volatility is low, to get any premium, yeah, you could sell close to the current strike. The problem with that is it caps you out earlier, okay? So when you do cover calls, you might say, I'm not going to probably do cover calls. You could on utility stocks or staple stocks because many of them have low implied volatility. Low implied volatility, low premiums. Low implied volatility, lower maximum gains higher break-evens. Why? Well, because you don't get as much premium, okay? Now, let's use, for example, ZM. We're going to choose this lower dollar stock price, but it's still an example that we want to look at. Now, in this, what I want us to kind of take a peek at is some of you asked about when might an investor use weekly options or quarterlies. Now, what you're going to notice is they'll say weeklies, quarterlies. When might the investor use those? Well, when the investor looks at, let's say, the implied volatility, which, by the way, it's annualized, okay, 32%, we know that the higher that number is, the bigger the premiums, okay? Now, you're going to notice that we see that there's a strike at 65, but there's a strike at 70. So when we take a quick peek at this, we might say, geez, can I go look at the weeklies? Yeah, we can, but I want to kind of see, are they liquid? Well, when we look at the open interest, there's one contract in the entire world at the 67s. When you look at this one, this one with 31 days, it's more, okay, 76. If we look at this one right there, there's a little bit more, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go look at the weeklies. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you just said you would not go look at the week. I didn't say I wouldn't go look at the weeklies. I said I wouldn't look at them first. I would go look at the monthly options first. When we look at the monthly options, we could sell the 70s. The premium there is $1.69, okay? And I don't like the fact that if you look, look at that, that might not be enough premium for some investors. 
We're going to go look at, for example, selling something right at the fringe of that delta of 30 to 40, which has a delta of 41 and which has a premium of $1.62. Let's go back to our sheet and run the numbers. Okay. 66.39. Okay. Now, the other reason why we might want to consider the weeklies is because it gives us multiple different strike selections. So if we said, hey, we're going to sell the 68. Here's what we see on the numbers. Now, how much is the premium now? Well, the premium, if we look at that, said so the premium there, if we sold that, if we got somewhere right in the middle, let's say 165, okay? Now, when we do this, we now see what is the break even, et cetera. Let's kind of put that back. There you go. So if we agree to sell these shares at 68, add those two back, plus premium, okay? There you go. We now see that here's the numbers. Stock price appreciation, option premium, let's update that. There you go. Maximum gain is 3.26, 3 it's 4.91, if you add them together, okay? And what you're gonna notice is if that stock actually goes sideways, just the option premium, that option, what we call yield, is 2.49, break even. If that stock were gonna go down, it's literally 64.74, okay? So how do we put the trade on here? Well, what we're going to do is just for time's sake, I'm going to visually speak to the stop. We're going to go down and we're going to we're going to right click uh, right there. Okay, buy. We're going to go to covered stock. Okay, now just like we did before, and the question was asked about quarterly, so that's why I'm addressing them. Okay, if we went back and said, well, where would you maybe consider setting a stop? Wonder if we said we're going to set a stop right below 62.72. Why are we concerned about that? Well, if the stock goes down. We want to have a way to try to protect our capital. Single order, first triggers SEQ. And we're going to try to do this really in both accounts. Okay. Now I'm going to go data GTC. This is just like we did before. And I'm just going to type in the number. Okay. Zoom, method, less or equal to. What's the price? 6146. That number is just 2% below the horizontal support. Now, if we wanted to do these together, when we send this order, we could say, add one contract to the margin account and add one contract to the IRA. How do we do that? Confirm and send. There it is. There's multiple accounts. We're going to put one in the margin. Check. We're going to put two of them in the IRA. And notice down below the two, or, two lines in red there. Now, as a takeaway from today, what we want to really make sure is when you come to this class, you're going to become really good at verticals. Okay, credits and debits, bullish and bears. You're going to become good at cash secured puts and when to consider those strategies and why. Today, we really focus on the covered calls. Uh, another time we could focus about doing the kind of bullish examples. But just know that as we start to build this portfolio over time, we will absolutely be starting to kind of see how all these strategies work together and how some strategies work better in different types of trend environments and different environments of volatility. And as you see that, you're going to get more confident and comfortable. Now, I'm out of my time here today. Remember, if you have not subscribed to the Trader Talks from Schwab Coaching, make sure you do that, okay? Know that this has been uh, recorded, so you could go back at your own leisure. Remember, when we talked about examples, we did them for example, illustrative purposes only. Also understand that options carry a high-level risk not suitable for all investors. Today's class was really about trying to play direction, but also trying to... Uh, uh, focus on time DK. This has really been the class on using options as a stock investor. And thank you so much for your comments and your participation. Stay tuned for Barbara Armstrong coming up next. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.